Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial on the operating systems especially the memory management and today we are going to be taking a look at a memory management scheme which is known as paging so this is a very important topic from student perspective or even if you are just wanting to understand the fundamentals of operating systems paging is a memory management scheme which is pretty famous and also very important so make sure you watch this video till the end because we are going to be discussing in detail what what is paging what it helps achieving and how it works okay so we'll be talking in detail and we'll be covering everything about paging and i'll try to make it as easy as possible by using diagrams and examples for reference so with that being said let's start off with today's topic so before we get into paging memory management scheme let's just understand what exactly paging is and what exactly it helps us achieve okay so on the screen you can see a typical desktop scenario so we'll just take an example of a basic desktop or a laptop you can say so in that we are considering three components that is the primary memory which is known as ram random access memory secondary memory which is hard disk drive and our cpu which processes and executes instructions okay so this is that yellow cpu of course in complex scenarios and complex machines there are more than three different memory devices and different kinds of memory devices but we are just taking a very basic example so our desktop or our laptop has ram as the primary memory hard disk a general hard disk as secondary memory and cpu okay so now in general we know that the ram is limited in nature that is the size of ram is very limited compared to the size of secondary storage right so when ram is around 4 gb to 128 gb a hard disk typically starts at 1 tb or 500 gb if you are in the ancient times and nowadays this tb size is going on doubling and increasing a lot so we have a lot of secondary storage and for the same money the ram is very expensive we know this thing right and the reason why ram is more expensive is because it is a totally different device which is very high speed memory device and it is volatile in nature and it is best suited for programs to be stored and run from okay so programs basically can be stored in hard disk but when they are supposed to be executed they are moved to the primary memory in the ram because then the cpu can execute instructions from the program very fast and that's the beauty of ram that it is a very high speed memory access device okay so this is the basic crux here we all know this this is pretty basic fundamentals right so where does paging come into picture now as the technology has been advancing and as the programs are becoming more and more complex the ram sizes are not really increasing a lot so typically when a multitasking scenario comes into picture so there are lot of applications which are running in the ram right so even if you just open up your task manager there will be like hundreds of processes already running in the background and when you open up more complex applications especially gaming and graphic intensive applications they take up more ram and more processing so this makes the entire ram full and this is where the memory management comes into picture now the memory management term itself tells us that you have to manage memory efficiently and paging is one such methodology in which you can efficiently manage memory so how does this paging work so this paging memory management scheme is being implemented by the memory management unit which is a unit inside the entire system which basically performs this and applies this paging scheme and as you can see a dotted rectangle is being generated in the hard disk so what exactly happens is in this paging scheme we use some portion of the secondary memory as a virtual ram okay so i'm just going to say vram which is basically virtual ram so this newly allotted memory can be used to store processes in the form of pages so we'll come to what is exactly a page in a minute but essentially what we are going to do is some of the running applications or some part of the running application can be stored in the secondary memory if they are not used okay so cpu is going to be running some other process or application so let's say the cpu is running these two applications and these two are free right so what happens is in this paging these two would be moved to the secondary memory and only when they are needed they will be moved back okay so this is how that paging works and this is the basic crux of paging that is we are increasing the primary memory size not physically that is not actually adding extra ram but we are using some portion of the secondary memory okay so you can see some portion of the secondary memory is now being assigned to store running application processes so this is the crux behind paging and a very overview of what paging is now let's take a detailed look into what exactly happens in paging and let's see the working as well 
So as you can see on the screen, on the left I have some theory on paging and on the right we again have that same diagram. So I'm just gonna read the theory and you'll understand it very easily and then I'll also show what happens in the diagram also. So in computer operating system, paging is a memory management scheme by which computer stores and retrieves data from secondary storage to use in main memory. So as I mentioned, some part in the secondary memory is being used to store programs and then depending upon the need, it is being retrieved into the main memory. That is the physical memory. So in this scheme, the operating system retrieves data from secondary storage in same size blocks called pages. Okay. So what happens is in the secondary memory, it is divided into equal sized blocks, which is known as pages. Okay. So fixed size is defined. So let's say this entire memory is divided into two KB blocks. So this is going to be two KB. This is going to be two KB. This is also going to be two KB and so on and so forth. Now paging is important part of virtual memory implementation. So this is basically that virtual memory that we are creating and we're using it to store programs when the physical memory exceeds the actual limit. Okay. So this is what is point number three. Point number four says we can perform non contiguous memory allocations. We'll see how that works and it also helps in external fragmentation. So these two points we'll see when we actually see how the working goes. So logical address space is divided into equal size pages. So this is that extra space. Of course, all these extra space is going to require some address, right? So physical memory, that is the RAM will already have some address, but the part of the secondary memory that we are going to use as virtual memory needs some address, right? So some logical address is going to be generated for each of the pages. That is the location of the pages in the memory and the physical address space is divided into equal size frames. So in this paging scheme, the RAM is also divided into blocks which are known as frames. Okay. So this is a frame and this is a page and very important point to note that the frame size is always equal to the page size. So you can see point number eight over here. So if this is two KB, even this frame is going to be two KB sized. Okay. That is two KB of memory can be stored in this block that is in this frame. Two KB can be stored in this frame and so on and so forth. So the logical address or virtual address is generated by the CPU. Physical address is the actual address available in the RAM. So since this RAM memory already exists, it is already going to have some me memory address, but this extra virtual memory that we are going to use is going to have some virtual address, which is generated by the CPU. And lastly, very important, the mapping of virtual to physical address. That is the mapping of these two addresses. That is which page is stored in which memory location is going to be done by the memory management unit, which is a hardware device. And this mapping is known as paging technique. So this memory management unit is actually a hardware device, which performs the mapping of which page is being stored where in the virtual memory and how to get it back in the RAM. So that all mapping and addressing is done by this memory management unit. And this in turn is known as paging technique. So now I hope things are pretty clear to you how exactly it is working. So now that the basic overview of paging is very clear, let's move to the actual working by taking an example. Okay. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, we have a big diagram over here. We have some theory and this is a typical scenario of paging happening. And I'll explain to you in detail what exactly is happening in a minute. So to start off with, let's make certain assumptions. So the assumption number one is consider a process X which is divided into pages that is P1, P2 and till P5, which means we have P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Now what is a process? A process is an entity which is running in the background. So let's say you start off an application. Let's say you start off your Chrome browser. So behind the scenes that is in the memory, there would be multiple processes being initiated by this application. So let's consider one of this process, which is process X. Okay. Now we just read that in paging scheme, the memory is divided into equal sized blocks, which is pages in the virtual memory and the physical memory is divided into that same sized frames, right? So now a process can be very large, right? So let's say the process is actually 10 KB and our page size is 2 KB. So now the process has to be divided into five parts, right? Of 2 KB each. So this is what is happening. So the process is divided into five parts. That is five pages and we name them as P1, P2 until P5. So we are just naming it and assuming it. So since the process is 10 KB and it is huge, it has to be divided because this paging scheme takes only two KB sizes and stores it in a memory block. So we're dividing 10 KB into two KB, which is P1 to P5. Okay. So this is the assumption, right? Okay. So let's move ahead. 
So the CPU is going to generate the logical address which we just saw in the previous slide. So you can see that this is our CPU and it is pointing to an address which consists of two parts P and D. So what are these P and D? So coming to the theory, P is the page number. P is the page number which is used as an index into the page table which contains base address of each page in the physical memory. Now if you read this point again, things will be little more clear. What exactly P is, is used as an index in the page table which contains base address of each page in the physical memory. So we have a page table over here. So let's talk a little bit about this page table. So basically this page table is used to perform mapping of pages to the appropriate frames. So in the secondary memory, you can see this entire blue box is our secondary memory. We have created some space which is acting as a virtual memory inside which we have divided each block into pages, right? So here you can see P4 is there in the secondary storage in the virtual memory. So P4 is basically the address directly addressed to where exactly it is stored. So this page table will have an entry of all the pages for that particular process. So every process will have an its individual page table, which is also going to be stored in the memory only. Okay. So somewhere in the RAM, we will have page table one or page table X, which is process table for process X. Okay. So this is there in the memory only. And what it is, is it is a data structure which stores two important columns. That is the page number and the frame number. So it is a mapping between the page number in the virtual memory and the frame number in the physical memory. Okay. So the CPU generates logical address, right? So it knows the page number. So let's say it is looking for P5. Okay. Let's say it is looking for P5. So the memory management unit now checks this P5 that is page five of process X in its appropriate page table, which is there in the main memory, it will directly go to P5. That is the index. It will not go line by line. It will directly go to the fifth row because this P5 is a direct index. Okay. Now the memory management unit will see. Okay. So we got P5 over here as a page number and it will see what is the corresponding frame number. So you can see it is F21, which is frame number 21. So now the memory management unit takes this F21 and it gets the physical address. So here it is F21. So you can see from the page table, the memory management unit took the page number and got the frame number. So what exactly happened is using this page table, we got where exactly page is that is page number five is in the main memory, which is at location F21. Okay. So next part of this address is this D value. So what is this D value? So this D value is page offset which is combined with the base address to define the physical memory address that is sent to the memory unit. Now we know that this process X is divided into five pages P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Now each process P1 is also going to be having multiple instructions, right? Since it is 2 KB, which means that it is not going to be of one single line. So the P1 would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines stored at different memory locations, right? So they might be contiguous in nature. So let's say this is at one, two, three, four, five and so on and so forth. So this page offset is basically the address inside the page where exactly is the instruction. Okay. So this P will give you which page in our case, it is P five and this D will give you which line inside the page is supposed to be executed. Let's say this D value is three. So you want this instruction to be executed inside this process P five. So this is what this offset is. And this offset is going to be same over here as well as over here, because essentially what we're doing is we are just seeing where exactly P5 is in the main memory, right? But the offset is going to be the same. So this offset is replaced over here. Let's say it is three. And by this, the entire memory management unit resolves the physical address. Then the CPU gets the physical address and it goes to P5. That is page number five for the process X and it starts executing P5. So this is the entire working of paging and how a page table for a particular process is used to convert the logical address to the physical address. And essentially what we did over here is we just saw where exactly the page is in the main memory. Okay. CPU initially didn't know it because it was having the logical address. It had the page which it wanted to execute. So the memory management unit took the page of that process X. It checked in the page table of process X where exactly P5 is and it got the address in the physical memory, which is at frame 21. So this is that frame 21 where P5 is. 
So then this is how the address was resolved and then CPU went on to execute that page for that process. So I hope you have a very good idea of how this entire paging works. You can read through the theory of page number, page offset, frame number, frame offset. Essentially it is the same. And this point is very important that every process has its own page table. And this page table, so this is page over here. And this page table is stored in the main memory. That is the physical memory. Okay, somewhere in the main memory itself, we have stored the page table also. Lastly, I just wanted to quickly tell you about page fault and we'll see in detail what a page fault is and how to handle the page fault. We'll see that in further video, but let's assume that we wanted to locate P4 in the main memory. Okay, so let me just first erase all this out. So let's say instead of P5, we wanted P4 that is CPU wanted to execute page four of process X. So the memory management unit MMU will check the entry of P4 in the page table of process X and you can see INV which is basically invalid bit or invalid entry. Okay. This INV or I bit will actually mean that this P4 is not there in the physical memory that is RAM. It is not there in the RAM, which essentially means that P4 is somewhere in the virtual memory. So you can see P4 is over here in the secondary storage. Now this is what is known as a page fault and page fault is essentially when the page for the particular process is not there in the physical memory and it has to be brought into the physical memory somewhere. Okay. So this is a little bit of basics of page fault and we'll see in detail how page fault and page fault handling can be implemented in further video. And we'll also see how paging is non-contiguous in further video because when page fault is explained, that's when the non-contiguous situation also will be very clear. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of paging, why we need paging and what paging helps us achieve and also the entire working of what happens behind the scenes and how memory management unit uses page table to get the physical address from the logical address. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments that you like this video, share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.